Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today I'm working on my home server setup in preparation for eventually rack mounting my server, rack mounting this UPS system in front of me, which is brand new to me. It's actually slightly used, but I got it for a really nice price on eBay. So I'm gonna be looking at that a little bit. I'm gonna be switching over the server platform itself from an X370 system to a Z370 system, and I'll talk a little bit about why I'm doing that when I get around to it. But basically today is a little bit of a work log type of deal where I'm gonna go over some of the changes and then just kind of take you along for the ride to talk about each individual component and I'm switching over and why all this is happening all of this in preparation for hopefully at the end of next month I'll be getting a small rack mount cabinet that I can put a rack mount server chassis in so I can move my server over to completely rack mounted have it on a nice little cart that I can roll around if I need to but it'll be nice and tidy in the corner in my basement but today we're getting ready for that switch over so let's go ahead and talk about each of these components and then just kind of bring you along for the ride So the first part of this system is this cyber powered UPS and for those of you that don't know a UPS is a battery backup system that allows the power to go out at least the power from the wall to go out and the system plugged into this will then feed off of its batteries it's a battery backup it won't see any interruption whatsoever the computer itself will just continue running absolutely like normally now obviously Modern computers do take a little bit of energy and even these guys, as big and heavy as they are, will not keep your computer running for very long. So the purpose for this system to me is just to get my server to safely shut down, give it enough time for my server, my storage server to just say, oh, battery's on, better go ahead and shut down, then it'll stop the array safely and shut the server down safely so that if my power goes out, because you know I do live in Indiana, we have storms and they do knock out power from time to time. So if the power goes out, my server will notice that, notice that it's on battery backup at least, and then it'll safely shut itself down so I don't have to worry about any data loss when there's a big storm rolling through. We actually had quite a few bad storms here this uh, summer and this spring. So the power has at least flickered from time to time. And when that happens, my server is down. So with this thing, if the power flickers, the server won't go down at all. And if the power stays off for an extended period of time, the server will go ahead and shut itself down. All safe, I don't have to worry about my data being lost that way whatsoever. So I'm really excited to get this thing set up with my server. Now with most UPS systems, it's pretty obnoxious when the power does go out, which is actually a good thing because if you didn't notice the power went out, because maybe you just don't have any lights on, at least this way you know, hey, something's up and you just can't miss it when the power goes out. Now, I do expect this to be a little bit annoying when the power goes out in the middle of the night and it wakes me up, but uh, the notification is still appreciated nonetheless. Also, when it kicks over to power, there is quite a bit of a hum that comes from the unit just because it's on battery power. And uh, you'll notice that. So we're not plugged in right now at all, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. And I don't know if the camera is, or the microphone here is picking this up whatsoever, but I know it's picking up those beeps, but that is what happens when this thing is running off of battery power. It just constantly will let you know, hey, I'm on battery power. You should probably check something out, make sure all your systems is good, are good. And uh, if nothing else, you can always turn the beeping off. I believe you hold uh, the other button outside the power button for several seconds and it shuts the alarm off. But that's basically how this thing works. Now, if we flip it over here to the back side, you'll notice there are four outlets here that, I, that are battery backed up. There's actually a couple that are just surge protected that will not run off a of battery, which, you know, those would be good things to plug in things like network switches or routers, things that if the power goes out and they just turn off, not really gonna be a big deal. The big thing for me is just the server, which only takes up one of these outlets. It does give me a little bit of room for expansion later on. And then over here on my left side, your guys' right side, I guess, we have a USB port, which is how the server is gonna actually communicate with the UPS so that it knows when, I think I'm gonna set it up for like 50%, when the battery is down to 50% and it's on battery power, the server will go, okay, battery power, 50%, time to start shutdown procedures. So that by the time we are finished spinning down that array that's in my Unraid server and shutting down that server, this thing will still have battery power left. I don't wanna wait too long because this thing will uh, have its power eaten through pretty quickly in an extended power outage. And then the next thing I'm doing today is actually swapping out the motherboard and CPU with this, I right now I'm running an X370 based uh, platform. It's actually the same sort of line of motherboards from Asus, it's a prime board as well. But I'm swapping to a Z370A. Uh, this is an Asus motherboard. It's just been sitting in its box for several, several months, probably almost a year at this point 
been doing nothing. So I put the i5-8400, which is actually delitted. Not that that really matters because it's not a hot chip to begin with and it's not overclockable, but it's gonna be sitting in the server. And then I went ahead and threw a really nice cooler on it, this scythe cooler with an RGB fan. And I basically did that again because this thing has been sitting in its box for a while since I reviewed it. This is the uh, Mugen B, I think. And it might as well be doing something useful. I figure it can't hurt to have a little extra cooling capacity. So this will, this platform switch will allow me then to have access to the Ryzen 1800X that I was gonna be running in my server. And it also allows me to have access to that X370 motherboard because I have a lot more AMD CPUs right now than I do Intel ones. The Intel ones have been sitting in their boxes and away for a long time because they just haven't been good values for a long time for what I want them for. This is a way for me to use something, actually several pieces of product that I wouldn't have been using otherwise and to put them into use while also freeing up my Ryzen stuff. So with all that said, I think it's about time we go down, grab the actual storage server, which is just a big behemoth of a thing, and uh, start working on getting this motherboard swapped out, and then we can kind of put everything back together down in the basement in the corner where everything lives, and plug everything in and see just how well it works. Okay, so here is the final setup with this system. Now, every outside connection that goes into the server itself actually runs through the UPS, including Ethernet. Now, I haven't actually read up on it, but I assume it running through the Ethernet will condition that to the point where if there is some kind of surge through the Ethernet, it should never reach the motherboard itself. So this server is pretty much completely insulated from outside forces so long as the UPS does its job. I did test it out. The shutdown, or at least the automatic shutdown over USB, does in fact work. So this thing is good to go for about another month. And you may have noticed that this thing is kind of just on the edge here, and that's because this little guy is just a really short cable. I'm not really too concerned right now because all this is coming down in about another month where my rack mount cabinet will go right here in this corner where this server currently is. So I'm not worried about cable management. It is what it is but another month and this will all change again anyways. So hopefully you enjoyed that server update. That is part one, of course. I will have a part two when I put the server cabinet together and all of that jazz. Uh, and I'll also go ahead and leave some links down below, especially with things like the UPS, which I picked up on eBay for just over $60. Uh, it's much more expensive if you're buying it brand new, but I'll link it down below anyways, the exact model that is. But I wanna know what you guys think and specifically, what is your home server setup? Do you have any sort of network attached storage? Do you have any sort of uh, media servers going on like Plex server or anything like that let me know your server setup in those comments down below and of course if you like the video give it a like share subscribe comment all those things help out the channel a lot you can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware and as always I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video